This year, approximately 1.7 million people in the U.S. will be affected by cancer. So our colleague, Dr. Frieda Lewis Hall, Chief Medical Officer of Pfizer, is back to help answer some of your questions. Thanks, as always, Dr. Frieda. We're going to dive right into this. Here's what our first viewer wanted to know. What exactly is cancer? So actually, it's a great question because a lot of people think that cancer is one disease, and it's not. It's actually thousands of diseases. But they're joined together by one principle, and that is the uncontrolled growth and spread of basically a normal cell gone rogue. Human cells grow and divide to make new cells to replace cells in the body as the body needs them. What normally happens is if a cell is old or it's damaged, they die, and these new cells replace them. What happens in cancer is that the old or damaged cells don't die. They continue to grow and divide. These abnormal cells can divide without stopping, may form gross called tumors. There are two kinds of tumors, a malignant tumor, which can grow and spread to other parts of the body, often traveling through blood vessels or the lymph system. A benign tumor can still grow, but it does not spread. And that's an important distinction. Let's hit up another question that comes from Twitter. I've heard people say they have stage one or stage four cancer. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. Staging is the process of finding out how much cancer is in a person and where that cancer is located. Now, the way we stage may vary from one type of cancer to another. But what's important is that doctors use this staging to help determine which treatment might be the right option. Now, stages are usually uh, kind of uh, described in five stages. The first is stage zero. And at this stage, abnormal cells exist in the tissue but have not spread to surrounding tissue. These abnormal cells may not be cancerous, but they may become cancerous. And so that's stage zero, whereas stage one means the cancer is small, or only in one area. Stage two and three is when it's larger, has spread to nearby tissues or lymph nodes. Stage four, which is also known as metastatic cancer, that's when the cancer is spread to other organs. It's really important to talk to your doctor who can provide you more information. And also we've put some additional information on staging on gethealthystayhealthy.com to help folks understand this complex issue. And we do have another viewer asking, if a family member has cancer, am I likely to get it too? I want to know if I'm at risk. So the answer to that one is not necessarily. People get cancer for all sorts of reasons. Family history is an important risk factor, but it is one risk factor. And family history can be important because you can inherit an abnormal gene or you can share environmental risk factors like smoking or um, dietary habits that would lead to obesity. So if we think about family history, there are two ways in which they um, can increase your risk for a cancer. The closeness of the relatives that have the cancer and the number of relatives that have the cancer. But it's important to remember that only about five to 10% of cancers are thought to be related to inherited abnormal genes. And sometimes a combination of familial genetic risk combined with lifestyle or environmental risks may act together, and that could be the trigger to cancer developing. Our next question comes from an email. Nanette asks, I keep hearing cell phones can cause cancer. Is this true? Well, exposure to radiation from cell phones and microwave has not been demonstrated to be of any major risk. However, we do know a major risk, and that is exposure to radiation from the sun. The thing that we should really do is to make sure that we're using sunscreen and that we're not exposing ourselves to sunlight at peak sunlight hours. These things may help us reduce the risk of skin cancer. And also another way to reduce your risk of many cancers is to avoid tobacco. Also exposure to that secondhand smoke is a risk factor. Follow a balanced diet, limit your alcohol intake, certainly exercise regularly. All those can play a role. Absolutely, there is so much to know about the ability to reduce your risk. And we put some of that information on gethealthystayhealthy.com as well as some answers to other cancer questions. Dr. Frieda, 
Always appreciate you coming on. Always a pleasure being here. Thank you. More to come.